That was written the Royal Flight DC-3 Dakota. you over to the chair of Marsham Heath Aviation Society, Mr. Martin Cook. Thank you, Steve, very much indeed. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It's lovely to see so many of you here today. I'm not going to say anything about the weather, except thank you. Lovely to see the sun shining. Okay then, folks, I'm going to introduce you to our president, Mr. Richard Barker. Uh, as some of you here will know, we lost our president, Mr. Gordon Kinsey, last December. Unfortunately, he passed away after quite a protracted illness. But, uh, and he was a super guy, as you all know. Um, we've described him as a stick of rock. If you broke him in half, he'd have miles from Heath all through him. But anyway, uh, so sad affair there. But uh, Richard is uh, no newcomer to Martel Shamith Aviation Society. He's been a, a vice president for more years than he or I could remember. But uh, anyway, and he's done some sterling work for the society in as much as over at the Memorial Square, for those of you that are familiar with that particular area, 
we had the plinth first of all was reduced in size and Richard oversaw that uh, on our behalf and uh, obviously for the Americans and the RAF etc. So a brilliant job there and then of course 1991 he uh, with a, a group of uh, businesses and uh, other people in Gordon, including Gordon raised a memorial uh, over there to the RAF to the uh, uh, Commonwealth Air Forces, the Dominion Air Forces, and to the uh, uh, general public. So he is no newcomer, and since then he spent lots of his own money in maintaining and helping us to maintain the Memorial Square, which we thank him for most sincerely, because it does look very nice over there. And as you know, the American Memorial over there is... Uh, a classic really because it was the first memorial raised to the American dead and it has a 72 name so it's a unique memorial over there so we're rather proud of that anyway folks I'm gonna hand you over to Richard who's just going to welcome you all here and I suppose perhaps open it I suppose in a, in a very simple way but Richard thank you very much thank you Martin Welcome to you all. Lovely to see so many people here. I must say, when Martin first approached me to ask me whether I would become president, I accepted because it was a great honour and also a privilege. It is an honour, really, because I follow that extraordinary man, Gordon Kinsey, who had a profound knowledge of everything military aviation over the skies of East Anglia and also a deep understanding of what Martin Heath has meant to military aviation. His books and the way that he has proclaimed Martin Schmidt for the years has been a huge benefit <coughs> to such an important, crucially important place and also, Martin from Heath was the place that he loved. It was often said that if it didn't happen at Martin from Heath, it didn't happen at all. Examples of the first blind landing, armaments were tested there. And I remember that when we had a dedication service for the uh, memorial that I was involved with on the Barrett Square, afterwards I was talking to this uh, pilot who told me that he was a test pilot for the Wellington, the Wellington bomber, and he did on occasions test it over Martlesham, which was the place to be, of course. And on one occasion, he told me that part of the wing fell off. I asked him what on earth did that mean to him. He said, "Well, first of all, I'm glad I got it like that because that's what I was meant to do." But how did you get down? Well, I won't use this exact words, but he said with enormous difficulty. The 15th Open Day, run by the Martin Relief Aviation Society. That's a remarkable thing in itself. That's fantastic. I think that deserves a round of applause, don't you, for its 15th year? Well done. Well done, the Society. So, it gives me much pleasure to formally open it to wish you a very enjoyable and a very interesting day. Thank you. Well, thank you, Richard, very much for that. As Richard has said, this is the 70th anniversary of the end of World War II, victory in Europe and victory in the Far East, of course. And we have with us this afternoon, of course, Mr. Winston Churchill. A round of applause for Mr. Churchill, please. Yes. And uh, I'm going to uh, also introduce at this time Rachel Hockley Warner, who you saw last year. And Rachel has come all the way from Essex. Yes, give her a round of applause. She is uh, attached, if that's the right word, to Stomari, the First World War uh, station down in Essex. And they've got an open day today, but she's come along here today to actually play for us. She'll be playing the last post. We will then have tap, taps and taps, <laughs> and uh, we'll then have a minute's silence, and after that, 
Revali, Revali after that, folks. So uh, uh, we'll hand over at this moment in time. Oh, Okay, Mr. Wood, Mr. Churchill, you'd like to hear from Mr. Churchill, wouldn't you? Yes, of course you would. Mr. Churchill, thank you. The gratitude of every home in our island, and in our empire, and indeed throughout the world, except in the abodes of the guilty, goes out to those British airmen, who are undaunted by odds, who are unwearied by their challenge of mortal danger, are turning the world war by its prowess and devotion. Never in the field of human conflict was so much owed by so many to so few. You may notice that our Royal Air Force Ensign is at half-mast. And the reason for that is that our dear friend uh, Tom Scrivener died two days ago. Uh, Tom was the chappy who represented us, the Royal Air Force, um, when we opened this museum and there was a cutting of tapes between the US AAF, the Americans, and the British. Tom uh, cut the ribbon on that case. So we do think of Tom. He was a wonderful supporter of our society. His family still live in Ipswich, and I don't, don't know whether more is here, but um, we wanted you to know that we do miss Tom, and uh, of course lots of other people are not with us. But that's the reason the answer is half mast. We also think of the people that uh, lost their lives at Shoreham with regard to the Hunter incident. Um, one thing I'd like to draw your attention to, you must go and have a look. Our last project has been uh, on the left of the control tower, your right, the, we've opened up the revetments, and the revetments were protection for the P-51s and P-47s of the American Air Force. We've moved about 80 or 90 tons of soil there, we've dug, we've raked, we've swept, and it was a really difficult project, but we tend to think this is the last of our heavy projects, but they do keep cropping up, don't they, Martin?
Um, but do go and have a look. It's quite fascinating. Uh, it would protect the aircraft from outside bombing from the peri periphery of the of the airfield. Um, and it's quite incredible that those were put there in 1942. It was a dry mix of sand cement in a sandbag, packed up, uh, and the uh, fire hose came along and sprayed all of that within three days, an absolutely solid wall with a soil bank from the outside. But um, do go and have a look, and that's the last thing we have done. Um, even English Heritage are interested in that, and, uh, and of course the control tower itself and the runway, Signal Square, was built for the uh, Americans when they came in in 1942. So we've really got uh, quite a collection of uh, their heritage here. Um, what I would just like to say is, before going, I can't see all that many donation badges. Forgive us for keep repeating this, but the only way we can keep this open is, is for having events like this where we can raise some money uh, we have horrendous electricity bills, that's our biggest problem. So do buy a badge, a donated badge. And also, in the same area, we have the raffle tent down there, some good prizes. Do please buy a raffle. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.